are actually the same basic recipe for any yeast bread, like my homemade yeast rolls. Um, you can follow the same recipe. It just kind of depends, like if you want to add more milk or butter or different things to the yeast mixture, then you can kind of tweak the recipe toward more of like a yeast roll versus a cinnamon roll versus a loaf of bread or cheesy bread or bread sticks or whatever. So this is, um, I'm gonna try and actually this time do some measurements. This is gonna be interesting because I just have a one cup measure and I know this is supposed to be for dry ingredients, but I'll kind of show you about how full it is and that should help a little bit with measuring. So the first thing you wanna do is to get some water going. Um, I just use tap water and you want to adjust your water temperature until it feels just barely warm to your wrist. And if it feels just nice and barely warm to your wrist, we're gonna go ahead and put in um, one cup and maybe another half or so, half a cup. That looks about right. All right. So over here, we've got our bowl that we put that water in. And then we're gonna add the dry yeast to that. So you wanna get um, two packs of the dry yeast. And I like to use Rapid Rise just cause I'm impatient. And I don't like to spend all day making bread. So I use like a Rapid Rise yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in um, two packs of the yeast. And the rapid rise yeast is just a little bit more fast acting than the more slow acting regular yeast. So I'm gonna keep these two packets for another time. And you want this yeast to really just set in this water. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk it a little bit just to kind of get it going. super high-tech handleless whisk <laughs> but hey it still works so I haven't gotten around to buying a new one because this one still works so we're going to just whisk around that yeast in the water you just kind of want to get it to be mixed to the point where there are no more like dry little pieces because those little dry granules um, are the state of like hibernation that the yeast is in. And then when they get wet, the yeast starts to grow again. And I thought it was really fascinating that scientists, last week there was an article about scientists reinvigorating some yeast that actually was um, held inside of a ceramic, uh, like pottery. Obviously this has a glaze on it, but it's chipped right here. And if it didn't have a glaze, like some of this yeast could like still like hibernate or, you know, be dormant living inside of something like a clay pot. So they took this yeast that was 4,500 years old and reinvigorated it, like hydrated it and grew it and made bread. So <laughs> they said it was actually like a little bit of a different uh, taste like a sweeter type of sourdough than um, a typical sourdough bread. So, but we're not making sourdough bread today, not to get off track, but we just want to get our yeast going. And to this, I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. So I'm going to grab my um, sugar and I'm not going to really measure this because I just kind of like sprinkle it over the top a couple times because you just really want to feed the yeast. Once it's dissolved, you wanna just feed it. And then we're just gonna let it sit here for about 15 minutes and really kind of get um, get going, get bubbling. Okay, so I let this set for about 15 minutes and you can see that it is nice and frothy. You want your yeast to be, that means the yeast is really alive. You want your yeast to be active like that. So we're just gonna kind of whisk it around a little bit. And then I'm going to add some salt. You don't want to add the salt until, this is probably about a teaspoon of salt or so. You just want to salt as much water as you have in there. And then I actually 
you, so you don't add the salt until after the yeast has really gotten um, activated. I just add a sprinkling of cinnamon to the actual dough because it really helps the cinnamon rolls uh, have that like cohesive flavor. And you can whisk those two things in. And then we're also going to add a little bit of oil. So I just add a regular vegetable oil. You can do canola oil. Let me see, something like a quarter of a cup or so. You don't want a ton of oil, but you just want enough to make the dough kind of flaky. That's going to help kind of make the dough a little flaky. And if you want, you can make a little bit more of an enriched dough by adding an egg. Um, I'm not going to add the egg for these just because I feel like the flaky dough is what I prefer, but it'll make it like more chewy if you add an egg. So I'm going to kind of try to measure this somewhat loosely. <laughs> so that's about two cups of flour. And again, you can still keep using your whisk up until the point where it gets a little bit thicker. So what I'm gonna do is make what we call a sponge. So a sponge is basically a dough that's not kneadable. You're not gonna knead it. And again, I'm impatient. I don't like to um, do things more than, more than needs to be done. So I'm gonna make a sponge so that's kind of about the consistency now i'm going to add a little bit more flour and then stir it together with a spoon and that way it will make a nice sponge so you want it to still be to the point where you can still stir it you don't want it to be so thick that it needs to be kneaded so just kind of stir around. You can still see it's a wet dough, a wet kind of spongy dough, and you can just work that flour in. Of course, it's just regular all-purpose white flour, not self-rising or any of that stuff. So you can kind of see the consistency of the dough. It's a very springy, nice consistency. And then again, my favorite part, we're going to ignore it again so we're gonna ignore it till it's about double in size which should take probably about 45 minutes while it's resting you want to cover it but you don't want to put like saran wrap over it you can just put a either a pillowcase or a tea towel over it just make sure that it's stretched across the top so the dough does not actually come up and hit the actual towel so I decided I'm gonna make butter for the cinnamon rolls so I'm just gonna take some heavy cream while the bread is actually just rising a little bit. I'm gonna just take two pints of heavy cream and all you really have to do is whip whipped cream past the point of whipped cream to make butter. So we're just gonna turn on the electric mixer and So you're going to just keep whipping it. Butter does take some patience, so don't get discouraged if you feel like it's never going to turn into butter and you're just like, why is this whipped cream just staying whipped cream? Because it will stay whipped cream for quite a while. So basically, once it turns into kind of a whipped cream texture, you're gonna look for this kind of a, you know, separation to start to happen where it gets a little bit clumpy and then um, you know, you're just gonna keep going and you'll know, so don't, don't lose faith. Like you'll know when it turns into butter, you'll see this almost watery substance, kind of the whey or whatever, kind of just start to separate. And you'll be like, wow, the butter is actually yellow. So it will kind of start looking more yellow. And that means that you have butter. Once you have your butter and whey, it's like all this um, <clears throat> kind of liquid in there, it just looks like butter floating in kind of like 2% milk <laughs> or skim milk. So you take a, some kind of a bowl or pan, put a colander inside of that, and then put some either cheesecloth or butter muslin or tea towel or something inside of that. 
And then we're just going to pour um, all of that in <clears throat> just to really drain the way you can even drain this in a colander just a colander like to some extent if you're if you don't have a towel or anything and then you're just going to kind of lift that up and just squeeze so you're just going to kind of squeeze all of the moisture out as much as you can and then we're done with that colander and you can save this for baking or something else or you can um, you know put it in some cooking or you can just um, get rid of it call it a day whatever I'm just gonna kind of like wipe out <clears throat> the bowl that the that we beat the butter in and I'm going to take this nice butter out of the bag the little cheesecloth or whey bag and we're just going to kind of knead it around a little bit to make sure that there isn't any remaining pockets of whey or water in there and if you do find some more like a little teeny bit of the whey or water you can just kind of squeeze that again give it another squeeze and just make sure that you get all of the way out so we've done the second squeeze and this should be good enough for the butter that we need today you can put this in the fridge and um, it'll kind of slip out of that cheesecloth a little bit easier if it's cold we're just going to kind of use that cloth to mop up the <laughs> the counter space which is probably going to be a little bit messy after all that beating and then we're just going to rinse this out and clean that out meanwhile however i'm going to add a little bit of uh, <clears throat> salt because i like to use salted butter so i'm just going to add a little bit of salt just very light amount maybe a quarter or a third of a teaspoon or something like that and I'm actually going to put a little bit of cinnamon in the butter as well again just to blend it all together with the flavors and I'm just kind of kneading that around and we don't have to refrigerate this butter because I want to be able to spread it on the cinnamon rolls so I'm just gonna take my cinnamon butter that I've made and make a nice little ball out of it and just stick it in a bowl and there you have your cinnamon butter and that is now ready to use so you can also just kind of even it out um, with a spoon into the bowl and just set it aside i keep it at room temperature because again we're going to have to spread this over the dough to make the cinnamon rolls but if you do put that in the fridge, it will get just as hard as store-bought butter. So, um, but we're just going to leave it out to keep it nice and soft for when we need to use it and spread it over the uh, yeast roll dough. So since the butter has been making, and this is our final product, the butter, cinnamon butter, um, the bread has also been rising. So you can see it's doubled in size. It's got some nice pockets of yeast going just looks super healthy super alive and we are going to now add some more flour to our dough so that we can actually knead the dough this time so i'm not lazy i don't mind kneading it is a little work but i just like to knead it once instead of twice just because it's really not necessary for a light dough to have to knead it twice. So we're just going to get a spoon or a fork or something to kind of stir, first of all, that flour in as much as we can. And then once you kind of stir to the point where you can't stir anymore, you're going to want to roll your sleeves up a little bit for the kneading process. 
And you can just knead, if you have a big enough bowl, you can just knead the dough in the bowl itself. If you wanna turn it onto a floured surface, which I don't really have much cupboard space. So literally the cupboard area is not much bigger than my bowl here. So I might as well just do it you know, in the bowl. And what I do is I just use a punching motion and a turning motion. So I'm using this hand to kind of punch the dough down and the other hand to kind of turn it to kind of bring the dough around the side a little bit. <clears throat> and you don't want to overwork, like you don't want to work in too much flour or it will be a stiff dough and it won't be soft and flaky. So you kind of want to like pat your dough and once you get it to a point where you've gotten quite a bit of flour, you can see that it has a nice bounce back, but that indent still sticks a little bit. So that means we're gonna want to add just a little bit more flour. Just need it a little bit more. Just wants a little more love. And then this dough will be ready. So that's feeling pretty good. And you can also feel how like with this hand, you can feel how the moisture content starts to disappear once it gets the right amount of flour. When you're, when you're squeezing it, it doesn't actually stick to your hands as much as it does when there isn't as much flour in there. So, when you just kind of plop your dough down, again, we're gonna do the, the kind of poking test and you can see that it bounces back nicely. So when it bounces back nicely like that, where there aren't any deep indents left, then you're going to want to. So you're gonna to want to actually clean your bowl and um, then oil your bowl and put the dough in there for, we're gonna get ready for a second rising. Once your bowl is cleaned out, we're just gonna add a little bit of oil, not very much, just enough to kind of swirl around and grease that bowl. Then I'm going to take this, plop it upside down, and then turn it right side up um, in the bowl so that the top is a little bit greased. And that means that it's not going to stick to the tea towel or whatever you put over top of it, okay? So we're just gonna let this, again, rest. <laughs> we're gonna ignore it. And I actually have my dishwasher is right underneath of this cupboard, and so it's a little bit warm right here. If you have a warm space where you can set your bread to let it rise, it does like to be in a warm area. So we're just gonna let the bread rise here, probably for another 45 minutes to an hour and then come back and check on it. So you're just gonna let the bread um, sit in the bowl, cover it with your either tea towel or pillowcase or dish towel. And then I just have these two sitting on the cupboard, the butter and the bread dough. And the dishwasher is on so that cupboard again above it is a little bit warm, which is nice because it's gonna help that yeast really stay active and rise well. It's been about 45 minutes. We're gonna peek at the dough and you can see that it's nice and risen. So we're going to go ahead and dump this dough out onto a floured, lightly floured surface. So I am going to use my countertop for this part because we're gonna actually have to roll it out. Now you don't need um, a ton of flour. I like to just kind of spread the flour out lightly in sort of a rectangle about as big as a cake pan, like a nine by 13 cake pan or so. Just kind of spread it out in the shape that we're going to want to roll this dough. And you can see how nice and soft and not sticky, just nice and moist this dough is. So we're basically um, punching it down sprinkling it with some flour. We don't want to over knead the dough on the second uh, stage after the second rising because we're going to want to just have it really rise into the 
the cinnamon rolls. And by rolling it out, it really is almost kind of like kneading in a way. So we're just gonna roll that out into a nice rectangle. And this literally almost fills up my entire cupboard space. So yeah, hopefully you have a little bit larger area to work in in your kitchen. I'll kind of show you that rectangle. So you want to roll it about a half of an inch thick or so. Um, definitely you don't want it as thin as a phyllo pastry dough or anything like that, but you also don't want it too thick because you do want the blending of the kind of pastry with the cinnamon and sugar mixture. So now that we have this nice and rolled out into the rectangle, we are going to start spreading our butter and you can do this with a knife if you prefer but I actually like to kind of feel of it and it's just so nice and creamy to spread that fresh butter because it's not going to be all chunky and lumpy like butter out of the fridge so if you didn't make your own butter just use butter out of the fridge but make sure that you soften it either set out the butter at the beginning of the day or you can um, just microwave it for 20 seconds if you forgot to do that. So just make sure that it's softened enough to spread evenly over that entire sheet of dough. So you wanna make sure that there's a nice generous layer of butter because the butter is really what's going to make the sauce the like cinnamon sugar sauce so we've used probably about half or so of that butter and that's like the cinnamon butter is great for toast or anything else that you might want to make that is a little sweet so you can use that butter for anything that's and it doesn't really have sugar in it so you could also use it for other things like um, more salty dishes if you were okay with incorporating a little hint of cinnamon into one of those Next, dishes. Next we're going to sprinkle this with cinnamon. You want to make sure that it's just nice and even, nice and cinnamony pretty and then we're going to take our sugar and also just sprinkle if you have another way of doing this that's fine i don't mind just doing it right out of the bag because i think it's pretty easy some people like to use a spoon or i don't know something else but we're just going to basically make sure that that is all the way coated now some people like to put pecans or chopped walnuts or raisins or other things in there but i actually just like the traditional cinnamon rolls so we're going to just start at one end and just roll that up and you should see how your dough is nicely just lifting off of the counter you shouldn't have any dough sticking to the counter or you know you shouldn't have a ton of flour under here either that shows that you use the right amount of flour if your dough is lifting off and there's also not a ton of dough underneath. So when you get to the end, when you get to the um, horizontal end, you're just gonna pinch that seam shut all the way down. So we're just gonna pinch all the way down and you have a nice log. Now you can kind of adjust it into, you know, a more smooth log if you want. And this is going to be what you cut into your cinnamon rolls. So what we're gonna do is butter our pan and conveniently, we have this nice cinnamon butter. Again, that we're gonna use the homemade butter for buttering the pan because that is going to just bring everything together with that nice cinnamon flavor and that creamy goodness of the cinnamon butter. I always like to be a little bit generous with um, 
the buttering of the pan because Again, there's going to be a, a little bit of a sauce created by that butter. So now that the pan is buttered, we are going to put these cinnamon rolls into the pan. And the way that we do that is just to get a nice sharp knife. We want to get a knife that is going to cut right through this. And you can see that that makes a nice roll on the inside and then I like to just kind of flatten them down gently a little bit. You want these cinnamon rolls to be kind of uniform in size so you don't want you know like a huge one and then a tiny one so try and keep these rolls you know really really similar in size as you go. and just keep them patted down. <clears throat> okay, so when you get to the end of your pan, you're going to, you know, go ahead and, and add your last two cinnamon rolls in there. And then you might have a little teeny bit left, which you can just pop into a loaf pan and bake that. But for, for these, I like to just gently touch the tops of them with a floured hand so that there isn't, you know, too much of a, a doughiness to the top because we're actually going to put some frosting on these later and make kind of a cinnamon roll slash honey bun type of thing. So um, just adjust them around till they're nice and even in the pan. And then guess what we get to do again? We get to ignore these again for the last and final time while they rise. So we are going to just cover those again with our nice um, pillowcase and let them sit and rise for probably about 30 minutes. So this is what your cinnamon rolls should look like before you give them their last and final rise before baking. So they should look kind of almost like 50% dough and then, you know, 50% of the filling. So they're nice and swirled around, but not too thin. So while the rolls are rising, before they bake, I like to make the icing for them. So you're just going to start by pouring out some powdered sugar. I'm just going to use the last of this bag. And guess what? We're going to go back to the butter. So we almost used that whole, that whole um, thing of butter for this entire recipe. So again, that was just two pints of cream, or you could just use like a couple sticks of store-bought butter. So I like to just kind of mush the butter into the icing sugar. And we're just gonna kind of get it mixed in a lot. Now I really like to use a confectioner's vanilla, like from back when I used to make suckers. Uh, my lollipop candy flavors, which I don't have anymore because I'm not making that any longer. But <clears throat> they had a clear vanilla that was really nice because it then didn't necessarily affect the icing color. But we can also just use a regular vanilla or any kind of um, icing flavor if you want to have like an amaretto or something else. I just use regular vanilla though, because again, I like kind of traditional cinnamon rolls. And then kind of cream that in a little bit with the butter and sugar. And you can kind of then tell that, okay, we're gonna need a little bit more liquid. So I usually just use 
whatever milk is on hand. And Franklin's into almond milk, so that's kind of what we've got. But you just want to make sure that this is kind of a spreadable, almost pourable icing because you're going to want to drizzle it over the top. So you don't want it liquidy, but you also don't want it as thick as like an, a buttercream. If it is too thick, you can put it back in this bag and cut a hole in one of the corners and just pipe it out. That's always an option. But for these, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of drizzle this on the top. So it kind of has like a, a tan sort of color from that vanilla and even from the almond milk a little bit as opposed to having a white color that would come from either not adding the vanilla or having a clear vanilla extract, which they do make. And it is still very tasty and very vanilla flavored. But of course, vanilla beans are dark, they are brown, and so traditional vanilla extract, as well as a lot of imitation vanilla extract, is going to have that natural brown color, which is kind of goes against the grain of a lot of people think like chocolate is brown and vanilla is white, but vanilla actually like the vanilla bean itself is actually brown as well so pretty much everything that's tasty has some kind of a you know color to it so that is going to be too thick for me some people like it to be you know that thick i'm going to thin it down just a little bit more but when we ice these the rolls are going to be warm so the icing is going to melt a little bit because of that butter being in the icing. So you don't want it to be so thin that, um, see that's just right, that's gonna be perfect. You don't want it to be so thin that it just like rolls all the way off of the hot cinnamon rolls and like just goes all over the countertop. You want it to definitely like kind of stay on the rolls to some extent so that's perfect that's a nice nice icing um, for the rolls so we're just gonna put some saran wrap over that set it aside when those rolls are finished with their final rising then we'll go ahead and bake them and ice them and of course don't forget to taste everything <laughs> So this is what your icing should look like as you set it aside. So look at these beauties. They have risen and again they've doubled in size about. That's kind of what you want to look for with the rising. And they are ready to pop in the oven. So here we go. We're going to just put them in there and I also already put in those two extra ones off the end of the roll at the end of that kind of like log that we cut to make the roll. So we're baking these at 350 degrees in the oven and we're going to bake them for about 25 minutes or so until um, they are nice and brown on top and kind of sound hollow when they're thumped if that makes sense. Um, I actually put them in the oven while the oven is preheating just to kind of give them a little bit more of a boost with the rise and then just let them continue to cook until they are done. I'm going to then go ahead and frost them actually while they're still in the pan and this just kind of is an initial icing that's going to sink into the rolls because they're they're warm and also run down the edges a little bit and then we'll take the rolls out of the pan and cool them. You can also remove the rolls from the pan first if that's preferable to you. Um, the only difference is that you, you might get more icing on your countertop due to icing running down the sides if you take them out first. And some people actually just leave them in the pan, but I don't really like to leave them in the pan because then I feel like 
the steam from the heat and then the frosting kind of like makes them a little bit sticky on the bottom and kind of, you know, like wet on the bottom or whatever, just a little bit. I like a kind of a little bit of a crunch to the crust and then a super soft inside. A little crunch just on the top. So, you know, be generous with your icing because who doesn't love a nicely iced? I mean, this does have that butter in it. It's also got um, some lovely vanilla, which really adds to the flavor of the icing. So, yeah, it's almost like a combination of honey buns and cinnamon rolls. I mean, they really, they really are more like honey buns than a old fashioned type of cinnamon roll. And this used to be one of my ex-husband's favorite things to bring to like work or I don't know, to brag about my cooking, I guess. So, cause he thought they were amazing. Like they tasted just like a honey bun. Only, of course, super fresh and way better, hopefully. All right, so those are done, and we're just going to take them out of the pan to cool. So you should have enough icing to really cover the tops of the rolls and some to kind of go over the, the edges. And as you start to take them out of the pan, you can really see that beautiful um, kind of dough that's just, you know, really well done, but super flaky and soft and tender. Take them out and let them rest on the um, cooling rack and you can see that beautiful, really soft dough just falls apart. So yeah, these are going to taste like a delicious gourmet honey bun, but you also can think of them as cinnamon rolls or cinnamon buns or whatever pastry suits your your preference but yeah you've got to try them and taste them and definitely with that homemade butter they just really um they just fall apart I and mean, you can really just see like what a beautiful um dough that is it's very soft super moist but not doughy at all which is very important and they're so delicious so you already know I'm going to eat the food that I make because I'm always tasting everything. And since I don't use recipes or measurements, <clears throat> this is really how I cook, is my taste. It's so good. It's like so flaky, so moist. But I think I'm going to need a fork for the inside of the roll. <laughs> Because it's just, um, yeah, I'm getting my hands messy. So enjoy. I hope you try it out on your own. Make your own honey buns or cinnamon buns and let me know how they turn out. By the way, this is one with another little drizzle of glaze over it. And this is one with just the initial glaze from the pan. So you can either double glaze them or just use that first glaze depending on how sweet you want your bun to be <laughs> so let me know again if you make these and and always um I appreciate just hearing feedback like what would you like me to make next is there something that you really um want to see how I make you know just to just if you're curious so leave your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you next time